Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back to the studio. Um, it's Friday the 14th of October, which for a lot of people is feeling very end of season. And including us, officially our season finishes at the end of September, um, because that's a business-like date to choose. But of course the flower garden doesn't just stop overnight, although we did have a frost and lose the dahlias. It happens. It's the autumn. Anyway, uh, so I thought I would challenge you all to spend an hour or so in your gardens this weekend foraging for a 30 stem challenge. Now, I've been doing this 30 stem challenge for a few years now, and it's a really great way to encourage people into their gardens, take a pair of snips, take you could take a, a bucket, a vase, a jar, a jug, something with some water in. And I challenge you to find 30 stems. And they don't have to all be flowery and they don't all have to be perfect. What they have to be is interesting. And if you stand on your back doorstep and just look out, all you see is a sort of green or browny sort of nothing. I'll show you. This is my back doorstep view and it's rather depressing. There's a pile of old fencing wire on the ground and while it's sort of nice coloured trees, it doesn't look as though I would find any flowers there. So what you have to do is you have to go and get close and personal. You really have to take your snips, take your bucket and you have to actually go into your garden. In my case, with my wellies on, <laughs> These are merry people boots. <laughs> they don't pay me to say this, but I like them. Um, take, your, take yourself to the garden and have a look. And I reckon you can do a 30 stem challenge 12 months a year. And it's possible that at Christmas or in January, you'll be making a posy out of twigs and dried leaves and seed heads, but there will still be enough of interest to be able to do something. Obviously, 15th, 13th, 14th of October, get the date in the end. There's plenty, I think, in the garden, despite the fact the dahlias have gone. I've still got roses, crab apples, lots of interesting foliage, little bits and pieces. So join me while I make my 30 stem challenge. And then I challenge you all to go out and make yours. Uh, quickly, uh, please subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon and I'll tell you when I've got more clips coming out. And if any of the tips and tricks I give you in my clips are useful, you can always buy me a coffee. The link to buying coffees is in the blurb to all my clips. The coffee buying supports the channel and encourages me to make more clips. Enough. So I've had a little wander around the garden and I've got a good deal more than 30 stems because secretly, actually, I have a commission to make a large bouquet. <laughs> so I'm going to make something a bit bigger. But look, have you got last roses? Here's one. This is um, Iceberg. Isn't she gorgeous? Uh, lots of variegated foliage. The Physocarpus darts gold in the autumn develops this beautiful sort of pink edge. So it becomes a richer colour, really worth cutting. Here's a little bit of beautiful Cotinus, which is wonderful cut. Um, and it's uh, my go-to foliage for the end of the autumn. Here, from deep underneath my limelight hydrangea bushes, I'm cutting little spurs which haven't been touched by the weather. So they're good colour, um, faded, but really useful. Lovely sedum. Do you have some sedum? If your sedum stems are very fat, you can always cut them down. Look what I found bursting out all over here is my variegated mint and I might cut this bit off because it's a bit dry but there are side shoots which are very fresh looking so I love that variegated pineapple mint it smells delicious rosebuds ready to come out roses will come out if the calyx you see the calyx here this is the green um, covering if you like I call it the armor plating of the cut flower hello tea cake this is my dog. She's a border terrier. Um, once the calyx has started opening, 
the rows will open slowly in the vase. So look, this one is going to open. This is a Claire Austin. And this one will open. This is Port Sunlight. I have found in the compost heap self-sown some amaranthus, which I think is hilarious. So I've cut that. The I've been banging on about the spindle for weeks, but the colour of the spindle, isn't that fantastic? Um, obviously, those of you in America have wonderful colour, but we in the UK don't get such good colour so quickly. But this is a really reliable colour giver in the garden. It's a good small tree, um, the Euonymus europaea, so I recommend it. And tucked in there, of course, crab apples, still cutting those. I've been cutting those since July. Self-sown in the compost heap. <laughs> Chinese forget-me-not. I'm not going to ignore those, so I've got a few of those. And, of course, still going because they are so faithful. This is Penstemon Garnet, a real doer. It's been flowering since July. My perennial grasses. Um, Achillea, which will kill you if you get the sap on your skin. Uh, gorgeous. This is self-sown from a sowing from a crop I had in the spring. This is um, oh, honeywort. I'll give you the Latin when I remember it. Um, Cerinthi major purpurescence. Thank you very much. Get there in the end. And last but not least, my three very last blackjack dahlias. Everything else got frosted, so I'm only going to use those. So there you are, that's a nice mix. What would you get from your garden if you were, this tea cake, what are you looking at, tea cake? <laughs> She's a shocker. Um, what would you find in your garden and what would your 30 stem challenge look like? Right, I'm going to make mine and I'll show it to you when I'm finished. Now mine is actually an order, so I'm going to deliver it, so I'm going to tie it. But you might just put yours, plonk it in a vase. The skill if you're plonking anything in a vase is to have clean stems so that the flowers don't make the, the stems of the, that you've cut don't make the water in the vase dirty. Dirty water is the enemy of the cut flowers and your flowers will go over more quickly with dirty water. I'm going to use a vase as I make my bouquet and pop my bouquet in it as I go. And I'm going to be tying with raffia because I like raffia. It doesn't stretch and it doesn't, um, it doesn't stretch and it doesn't break. Uh, so it's my favourite. String is a bit stretchy and a bit bruising. Tea cake is whining. I'm going to let her out. And because my bouquet is going to be slightly more than 30 stems, I'm going to make it in three sections because it's a great way to make a big bouquet is to make it in sections because even my big, strong hands can't, there's a limit to how much I can hold in my hands. So I'm going to make it in sections and let's go. Apologies, I left my microphone in Cheshire when I was interviewing colleagues and friends in Cheshire this week. So I'm sorry if the sound isn't very good. Right, I will start with foliage. One, two, let's count as we go and we'll see how we go. One, two, three, always clean the stems as you go. Four, taking all the spare leaves off, four, Five, look at the colour, isn't that lovely? Five, having clean stems means that you can pull material up and down easily if things are getting lost in the mix. Five. I may as well cut all these roses. They're not going to grow much more. It's mid-October and even if they don't come out, look at the structure in a posy, in a bouquet. Isn't that fantastic? What I do with with thorns is I just clip them off with my thumb. While I'm up the field, I cut them off. I find any of those rose stripping things that you can hold in your hand, 
Rubbish. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now look, here is crabapple, heavenly, also lovely yellowing leaves. So I'm going to take nearly all the crabapples off, ruthlessly. It's all right, there are plenty on the trees for the thrushes, because otherwise it's too heavy. This way I can have crabapples in my bouquet, but also keep the lovely leaves. I think we're up to 10, 11. Again, with your grasses, keep the side grasses, keep the leaves on because it's interesting. 11. Twelve. Oh, how beautiful. Look at those little purple flowers. With bouquets, it's all about small interest because things are looked at from above. So allow, allow the small interest. 13. And I'm not really looking at what I'm putting in. I am even leaving the rose where the rose has gone over and the developing hip is. I think it's interesting. It's part of the story. Very Dutch 17th century still life. Nature morte. This is, after all, already compost. 16, let's have one of these poor old dahlias, the end of the end of the end. This is blackjack, small but beautifully formed. Sixteen, I'm assuming I'm up to sixteen, I'm not sure. Are <laughs> you dying of boredom? Sixteen. Seventeen. Strip your stems to keep the stems in the water clean, otherwise you'll get the flowers will go over more quickly, especially if there's anything a bit rotty, like this leaf of this uh, penstemon is a bit brown and manky, so I'm taking that off. There we are, look, coming along. <gasps> Mid-October, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, I can't remember how many cents we have, so I'm just going to carry on until I think we've got to, till we've got to about 30. And they don't go, the stems, but they, oh, sorry. They don't go with each other, but they are the story of the autumn. Very much, autumnal. Yeah. And there, look, she won't last. These won't last, but they'll be lovely today. And then my client can cut them out. And then the rest of the bouquet will come out and give interest. I'm just taking away because they were having an argument with the, with, the, um, with the blackjack. So I've moved them around a little bit. But I'm going to let them stand proud because they're so beautiful. And I only have them of my of my uh, iceberg, iceberg um, roses. I don't need masses, it's about detail for me. So we're nearly done for my first, first swing round. Look at that lovely mint, isn't that great? Very nice, I love a bit of variegated foliage. It really softens the, softens the look, it's lovely detail. And it'll smell nice. And this happens to be going to an elderly lady. And I think um, it will make her lovely house smell delicious. So let's have more of the mint. As if it's growing inside this bouquet. There, coming along quite nicely. And I'm nearly finished. Here goes, I'm going to frame this posy by facing the uh, spindle in. You can see the spindle has a back and a front. So I'm gonna face the front into the bouquet because then you'll see it because bouquets are looked at from above. There. 
Look at that. Hang on, I've got to tell Fabrizio something. I'm coming back. Right, we're just finishing with a stem of amaranthus. Amaranthus can be a little bit sort of floppy, but this has got a nice strong stem, so I'm going to allow it to flop out of the bouquet because it will then hold its place. When I put the bouquet together, I will hold it upside down so that the amaranthus is tucked into the bouquet and doesn't pull the bouquet out. There you are. So there's 25. Not 30, but what's your 30 stem challenge going to look like? So I'm going to tie up this 25 stems and you'll see that the stems are clean. There's no, there are no dead leaves. There's nothing on there that's going to rot in the water. It's really, really worth keeping your stems clean so that they don't rot in the water because that will A, make the water disgusting taking off these little bits off the end, make the water disgusting and it will make the flowers go over more quickly. And while flowers are not designed to last in a vase forever and ever, and anybody who says, oh, but they won't last, I want them to last a week or more. You're like, really? They wouldn't last a week outside. They are ephemeral art passing beauty. So I'm just going to cut the stems off to tidy them up. And make sure I've cut any bits of bits of leaf have come off. And that's a third of my bouquet. Uh, and But if you were making a 30 stem challenge, that's th 25 stems from my garden. What have you got in your garden that would make a 30 stem challenge. I'm going to pop it in this lovely vase and it can stay there while I make the rest. So I'm going to make two more and I'll show you how I tie them together. Right, there's the next, turn it around to get the light. There's the next bit. There are some roses open, lots of buds for interest, framed grasses, it's got mint, all sorts of bits and pieces for this lovely old lady who can sit and then, I, mean, I don't think people consciously meditate upon flowers, but if there is a lovely bunch of flowers in the room, don't you go and look at it? Don't you have a kind of commune with it? It's like a salt mandala made in a cave in the Himalaya. Very, very beautiful to look at and quickly blown away by the wind. Yeah. That's part two. So here's the third of my three. <laughs> this is a 37 stemmer. So I started with 25. I think the next one was exactly 30. And this one's 37. <laughs> so obviously your 30 stem challenge doesn't have to be an exact science. It's just a good number because if you have 30, 25 or 30 stems, you'll get a nice fat bouquet out of it. Um, so I've got my three. And I'm only cutting the stems off so that A, I've refreshed, I've reopened by cutting into the stem, I've reopened the cellulose drinking cells so that the stems can keep keep open and keep drinking but also is that lovely Ooh. uh i need more more raffia um but also they look nice together in the vase so there's one here's more raffia tucked under my armpit i spend a lot of time with things tucked under my armpit and here are the two original the first two i made I couldn't possibly carry all of these stems in one hand. Even with my great big arms like hams, I couldn't. But so there are my three quite fat posies and I'm going to tie them together. So I've got two there in one hand, you see, sort of. And I'm gonna just 
cross the other one over, carefully nestling the flowers into the, so it makes one great big enormous bouquet. And yes, all the roses are on one side, but if you make a garden, they're not all on one side, but there's a lot of roses over here. Um, but if you plant a garden, I make miniature gardens. If you plant a garden, the chances are the roses will pretty much all be together. You don't plant a garden so that it's evenly, you know, you don't plant one, two, one of one thing, one of another thing, one of another thing, one of another thing, and on and on and on. You tend to plant things so that they grow nicely together. And, uh, right, there we go. I'm going to tie it together. This is where the raffia really comes in handy because it's strong. It's not going to let go, I hope. Ready, steady. There you are. If I did this with string, I think, I don't know. The awful thing is I've never done it with string because I like raffia, but string feels unsafe to me. This is quite heavy and string, I'm not convinced, wouldn't drop it. It snaps string, whereas a nice chunk of raffia doesn't. Snip the ends off. And you can see the stems are sort of all together. And I'm going to put it in the vase so that you can see it. This is where I do a thing on Instagram and I will do it for this. And I go like this and I go, sometimes, I'm not far back enough. I've got the trolley in the way. But sometimes you just need the florist for scale. And then I go, and I try and make sure that some of the really pretty bits are in the picture. <laughs> anyway, doesn't that look attractive? So this is in fact a 90 cent challenge, but what I cha but you can see it's enormous. So I challenge you guys to go out into your gardens and find 30 stems and make something lovely for your house or as a gift for somebody from whatever you find. This is all treasure. None of this was planned. This is just what's left. So go and enjoy yourselves in your gardens this weekend and tag me on Instagram with your 30 stem challenges, hashtag 30 stem challenge, and I'm at Common Farm Flowers on Instagram. And I'll share some of them on my stories. There you are. That's a fun thing to do for the weekend. You're very welcome. <laughs> I'm going to put this in water before it collapses. And I'll take a picture and show you in a minute. So this big bouquet needs to be aquapacked because I'm delivering it 15 miles down the road. And this is how I do it. I have cellophane, which is a plastic, but it is made out of plant. It is a plant based cellulose based plastic. So it will rot down more quickly than oil based plastic. I put it, tuck it under my right armpit. I have the bouquet. I jab myself in the stomach with the bouquet. And I bring the cellophane up around so that I'm containing the stems in a, like a bag. I'm making a little, in, little, a little bag of cellophane. There we are. Easily done. More wrap here. And I do exactly the same again. I tie the raffia around. It's really important that you pull it tight. There. You see? Simple. I'm really, I'm not into complicated. The first time you do this, your bag will leak. The 15th time you do this, your bag will not leak. The first time you do this, it will take you a long time. There you are. Quite quickly, you become adept. Snip the ends on. Because tidy is as tidy does. And then, come with me. I stick it under the tap. Fill up the bag of water. Simple. I 
don't use flour food, I don't use bleach, I don't use sugar, I don't use uh, vitamin C powder, I just use clean, fresh water from the tap. There you go, bag of water. Very simple. And then I have a little bag. You see? And I pop my flowers in there, at the back, in the bag. And that, my friends, is Friday the 14th of October. Right, I challenge you to go out into the garden, cut 30 stems, make a lovely arrangement, tag me on the Instagram where I'm common farm flowers, and I'll share some of them over my story, on my stories over the weekend. And if you want to make a super huge one, this is a 30 stem challenge times three. Thanks very much for watching. If any of the tips and tricks have been useful, please do buy me a coffee. The link to coffee buying is in the blurb to all my clips. Or you can just support the channel by buying me a coffee. I like the coffee. Thank you very much. Uh, also, please subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. Thanks very much for coming. Next week, I have a visit to another flower farm, a new seasoned flower farmer uh, called Gemma at Colour Wheel Garden in Cheshire. So we'll look forward to that. I'll load that probably on Monday. Okay, have a lovely weekend, everyone. I'll see you soon.